This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. Happy New Year everyone, hope you're doing well. I think you'll be glad to hear my New Year's resolution of having the wooden 3D printer actually print something before the end of the year. I know this isn't the fastest paced channel, it took me one full year to finish the Arduino pen plotter, mainly cause making decent videos about something takes up 80% of the time while the actual work on the project is trivial. It's now also been a year since I announced the 3D printer project, and I promise I will get it done over the course of this second year. However, in order to do that I will be taking video production quality down several notches, prioritizing quantity over quality. Not something I like, but as I also like to say, professionalism stifles innovation, which is totally true. With that out of the way, here's what we're gonna do today. Last episode I installed aluminum angle stock as the stationary half of the linear rails, so now we can go ahead and build the Y carriage to finally have something sliding back and forth on these rails. And I'm also gonna have to fix a significant flaw I found in my planned design of the linear rails, but we're gonna get back to that later in the video. For now, let's get cracking by cutting the necessary strips from some 10mm MDF. Then I need some slightly oversized holes in the corners for the print bed leveling screws. I'm drilling to 5mm and then reaming them out with a 5.5mm drill bit because I just don't have a 5.5mm one with a point. Next I need to glue these together like so, and to get everything properly lined up I'm doing a dry fit first, pre-drilling some holes for small nails to sort of act as alignment pins for when the glue is on. This prevents the parts from sliding out of alignment on the thin layer of glue between them when I apply the clamps. Then I'm just measuring the diagonals to make sure it's reasonably square. And while that dries, I can go ahead and make the little springy blocks that the roller bearings mount to. These entire blocks are basically built in relatively stiff springs, pushing the roller bearings against the rail on both sides. So if the two rails aren't entirely parallel, or even straight for that matter, these blocks will mostly absorb the difference. Without them, making any wooden CNC with this style of linear rails would be pretty much impossible I think. You already saw me apply this technique on my Arduino pen plotter, where it worked flawlessly. You know, as much as I like to invent wacky use cases for multi-layered circuit boards, especially revolving around space flood apparently, truth of the matter is, most multi-layer PCBs are used in pretty mundane applications. Whenever you need rugged, vibration resistant or high assembly density boards, multi-layered is the way to go. If you have any project with these sorts of requirements, PCBWay currently offers lower prices on 4-6 to six layer boards thanks to lower feedstock costs, so go check them out via the link below. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this episode. Next I need to screw the roller bearings to my springy blocks, and then mount the springy blocks to the underside of the carriage, like so. But before, let's talk about this issue I found with my linear rails. So these are the V-Groove roller bearings I specifically bought for the 3D printer project, and would you look at that. Not only is the V-Groove nowhere near 90 degrees, but also these machined inner surfaces are anything but smooth. And these bearings being made out of steel, you can probably imagine how quickly my aluminum rails would be worn down. And even though the rails are pretty straightforward to swap out when they get banged up on this printer, this aluminum angle stock cost me over $6. That is 12% of the $50 budget for the entire printer. In a nutshell, 
These bearings are out of the picture. Fortunately, I caught that pretty early on, so when I bought stuff for my next bigger project, an Arduino laser cutter, I simply bought twice as many bearings as I needed. These bearings, however, don't have a V-groove, so I need to make some kind of sleeve with a groove in it to go around them. And even though wood would theoretically be possible, in this case it just ain't gonna cut it. I want plastic. But I have another problem. As you might have guessed, I just don't have a piece of plastic big enough to make those sleeves out of laying around. What I do have, on the other hand, is tons of plastic bottle caps. I put these through the washer, they are HDPE, and I'm going to use a very crude method called heat gun to melt them all together into a single piece of plastic big enough to machine my V-groove sleeves out of. Many hours later. Well, that was a chore. Turns out the heat gun couldn't really push enough heat to keep the big chunk fully molten, so I ended up making these little slugs using two bottle caps each instead. These were small enough to thoroughly melt, and with the gloves, I was able to touch them long enough to really knead them in order to get one homogenous piece of plastic. And I also ended up making five more than I actually need because I fully expect gaps and air bubbles rendering at least some of them unusable. To turn this into the nice little roller it's supposed to become, I'm going to use this induction motor I pulled out of an old dryer as a makeshift lathe. It is left-handed, cause, well, the motor turns that way, and I added an additional support bearing here to prevent any chatter from happening, since this motor has a comically long shaft. Also, fun fact, this motor is the same age as I am, and it's still going strong, unlike my mental health. And to make the little V-groove, I made myself a nice little forming tool. This is basically just a piece of these break-off utility knife blades, ground and sharpened into a 90 degree angle, and clamped into this piece of oak using another piece of scrap metal. So let's do this. No joke, turning all these took the better part of two days, and as much as I'd like to say they ended up incredibly accurate down to a hundredth of a millimeter, they really didn't. The diameter varies within about a tenth, not because it wouldn't have been possible to make them more accurate, but the more accurate you try to make them, the more often you need to measure, take something off, measure again, take a little bit more off, measure once more, to really sneak up on that hundredth of a millimeter. On this one, I got a little bit too impatient, slipped, and made the V-groove about two tenths deeper than it was supposed to be. 
But in the end, all these dimensions don't even matter in the slightest, because the only important thing is the angle of the V-groove in the roller and the bearing being centered on the V-groove. And ironically, those are the only two dimensions I freehanded without measuring. As you can see, just like I expected, I also ended up with quite a few imperfections. So I'm gonna pick the 16 best ones to put on the printer. Everything else I'm probably gonna keep as spares. I just measured to see if I need to dial in these rails to be more parallel, but by sheer coincidence apparently, they seem to be perfectly fine. I mean, here in the front I get 67.53 millimeters, and here in the back it seems to be 67.54, one hundredth of a millimeter. I mean, what are the odds? Now, of course, it's kind of difficult to measure these things without introducing some kind of cosine error. And fun thing, here in the middle, it's actually slightly more, it's 0.59. So these rails are bent slightly like so. But that's actually what the springy blocks are there to compensate for. So now I guess we just clamp everything to the frame, drill some holes and mount these springy blocks. Doing this without blocking you from seeing anything would have been quite the task, especially since I didn't see a thing myself. But it's on there, rolls quite nicely, so let's mark where all these holes go and drill them. The bearings do sound a little bit bad, that's cause I got the cheapest ones I could find. After all, if you need 50 of them, you don't really want to spend a dollar each. But other than that, it rolls very nicely. All in all, I'm extremely happy with how these rollers turned out. It's somehow weird to see real, actual plastic parts that almost look like they came fresh out of a factory knowing I made them myself. And I'm willing to bet no other manufacturing technique, be it injection molding or 3D printing, could make parts as radially accurate as these are. Sure, maybe more repeatable in terms of diameter and thickness, but to get them really round, I don't think you can avoid machining. Turns out, I kind of like the possibilities machining solid plastic entails. I may need to build a shredder and an extrusion machine ASAP, before single-use plastics get banned completely and I don't get a ton of free raw material with every shampoo bottle anymore. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, consider subscribing or leaving a like, 
If you have too much money and don't know what to do with it before inflation screws it over, you can now also support this channel on Patreon, where all videos are available right after I'm done editing. This one specifically, for example, has already been up on Patreon for roughly two weeks now. Thanks for watching. Remember, we are going to print our first Banshee before the end of the year, so stay tuned. I'll see you soon. Bye!